like I know it's part of the game and everything, but how difficult is it to establish any kind of continuity when you're constantly losing guys here and there for offense, defense, or whatnot? Yeah, um, I mean, I think that's just the nature of being a special teams coordinator in this league. There's always going to be, uh, there's always going to be change. That's the one thing that's guaranteed. Injuries happen. Um, certain guys are up some games. I mean, that's that's across every organization. So, you know, my job is obviously to prepare guys, um, you know, when their opportunity does arise to be able to execute in those situations, you know, when their number does get called. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is because there is so much change, there's an element of making certain guys understand the fundamentals it takes to be able to execute when their opportunity does come. Um, and in that sense, you are creating continuity, even though it may not be with the same players. It's the same fundamentals. They're practicing it the same every time. And that way, when they get their opportunity, they're able to, uh, to succeed. Do you have to change much, though, when you know you're not going to have, let's say, for example, Nick McLeod on for every you know core special teams play? Do you have to change what you do a whole lot? I think you always have to be very mindful of, number one, the opponent you're playing. What is their, What are their strengths? What are your strengths? What are certain things that you're trying to navigate through? Um, and then obviously, you know, piecing together the personnel that, you know, we use um, to be able to execute any scheme or any situation. Um, so, you know, it, to me, it's it's just necessarily uh, making certain our guys understand what they're doing. And then uh, whoever is out there is being able to just keep it as simple as possible for them. How does that dynamic work when there's a player who has a role in offense or defense and you want them and like, is there, how do, how do you just determine like if you're going to get them or they're going to be you know safe for those uh, two sides? Of the yeah, I mean, there's balance for sure with that. Um, we have a lot of discuss discussions as a coaching staff, uh, you know, with Dave's, with with Shane, with uh, Calf, and um, you know, we try and put together the best plan in terms of allocating certain responsibility and volume the right way. Take us through the uh, the punt return and what are your teaching points off that? Yeah, um, you know, obviously, uh, you know. That, that's not the, the expectation when we when we hit the field. Our, our job is to make sure that we flip the field, um, that we tackle the ball well. When we pin the opponent inside the 20, it's on those situations where we're plus territory. So that is every time we take the field, that is what is expected. Um, on that specific play, um, you know, whenever you give something like that up, it's never just one guy. There's a combination of things, and I ultimately got to do a better job of coaching all those fundamentals the right way. To give you some some points, we got to make sure that we're matching hanging distance to tie everything together. Um, we got to make sure that we're spreading the net and having good spacing dis and distribution uh, across the whole punt team. Um, you know, credit to uh, the the Steelers and 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 Calvin. You know, obviously a, a proven return with real speed. Um, that's something uh, you know we've obviously learned, and we got to and we got to take it to practice and make sure we're executing the next time we're out there. Do you have? A a problem with the you know the punter getting knocked into there where do you kind of stand on that and how do you look at that you know honestly like and i i know this might not be uh um the answer that you guys are looking for but my job is always to coach whatever the outcome of the play is that is that i'm i'm coaching that specific play whatever the way they call it I'm to me is there I, anything as a coach you can coach out of that like for your punter like is there anything you could say to him there? Or just... Yeah, you know, I, I, I think from a technique uh, standpoint, whenever you're trying to increase, you know, hang time, there's an element to what does your drop look like? What are your steps are um, when you're trying to increase hang time? Sometimes it's compacting your steps. Um, you know, the good thing about having, uh, you know, our specialists is they have kicked, punted, snapped in games um, and they understand the tweaks necessary uh, to be able to, to perform. Um, so th those are certain things that when we watch a tape, we definitely come back to and be like, okay, this is it. Or if we see the outcome, a lot of team, a lot of times these guys know right away, like, oh, this happened on this. Um, it's like a good golfer, you know, when they when they miss hit a ball or uh, miss hit anything, they know exactly what happened. You know, it's the same thing with specialist play. Like if they see something come off their foot a certain way, they know exactly the tweak and they get back to those fundamentals. How much extra time are you guys spending on – or are you spending extra time this week? It seemed like we saw yesterday a period where special teams at the beginning, which maybe you hadn't done in the past. No, I, I mean, it, it. every week uh, poses a new challenge. You know, when you are trying to figure out your practice structure from a special team standpoint, um, the way I view it is you got to self-scout yourself and improve on the things that happened the last game, or maybe it's a trend that you've been seeing the past few games. Um, so as you're designing what we're going to do in practice – 
um, there are certain things that happened in the past that you got to be able to to fix and then also be able to mix in okay we're playing this opponent how are they going to see this what are they going to try and attack us with and still be able to implement those so the practice structure to me is always evolving uh, depending on who you play and depending on what you put on the tape um, we will always continue to work uh, coverage fundamentals in that regard um, we do every week and we got to make certain that we execute ultimately when we get opportunity and to think Amir's done as the returner you know I, I, again Amir is uh, I, I've said it before he's an energy giver you know guys uh, Guys really do appreciate his intent, um, the way he approaches the game. There's a calmness, there's a coolness to him. Um, and I think that's ultimately what you want in a returner. You know, a guy that when he takes the field, you know, he feel like he has the ability to score every time. And, uh, you know, he has made good decisions. Um, you know, he's, for the most part, taking care of the football in terms of what we're asking him to do. And he's always learned from the situations that we're like, okay, maybe this is an opportunity to take it, or maybe this is an opportunity where we don't necessarily take advantage of a return here, knowing this. Um, cause he is, he, he tries to learn as much football as he can. He wants to understand what the blocking schemes are and where these things hit. And I was happy for him when he got a, uh, an explosive return on kickoff return. Um, something we certainly wanted to improve on. And, you know, I thought a return game got going a lot because of him and Eric Gray in that regard. And then obviously the guys blocking for him. As far as kickoffs go, are you guys pretty much set that you're going to just boom it through the end zone all the time? No, I, I, you know, I think, uh, Every game is is going to be unique in that sense. There may be a trend that make might make it seem as though, um, but we always got to be ready to cover kicks. And especially you guys know in this in this uh, region, you know we play in weathered games. And as the weather starts to change, even though I know we have a beautiful day today, um, you know we got to be ready to to cover kicks in every regard. In terms of that, um, even when you know the game plan may not seem as though, you know, um, but there are certain situations. Uh, and like I said, every every week is going to. Uh, allow us to you know come together and figure out what is our best possible outcome in terms of positioning the defense well on kickoff. Has it surprised you what a high percentage of kickoffs have been kicked in the end zone around the league? Or did you kind of see this coming coming into the season? Uh, you, you know what? Um, the return rate is a lot higher than it was last year. So you could look at it in that sense, too, and be like, OK, uh, the return rate is higher with this new rule. And I think that's ultimately that we're trying to get is a higher return rate, more covered kicks. Uh, which those numbers are presented now. Um, I guess the initial impression of were people willing to secede the 30 yard line, you didn't necessarily know how it affected the game until, you know, obviously you're getting a feel now of the flow of it. Um, so, you know, I think people still have, uh, you know, when they're just trying to tie in the offense, defense and special teams in terms of that specific play, they feel like they have still the opportunity to kick a touchback when needed. Um, and then other opportunities to cover kicks. So, Michael, on some of these um, bigger returns that break down, we always hear about lane integrity, you know, guarding your lane. How much of it do you think is a result of guys maybe seeing another guy falling off or not doing his job? And then, you know, instead of doing his job, he goes and does the other guy's job. Are you talking in specific to the kickoff play? No, I'm talking in general, some of the breakdowns that you've seen so far this year. Yeah, I, I think there's a level to, uh, Number one, understanding that you're not on the field by yourself. Okay, what is the base fundamental scheme asking you to do? Where is it asking you to fit? So what lane in, in, in your point, um, where are they supposed to fit? But the nature of football is it's never gonna be designed the exact way um, you have it on paper. You know, you gotta put these guys in situations to where if something happens, they gotta be able to overcome and make somebody right. Um, and that's where the balance in uh, just understanding how, when, well, when this happens, I know I was supposed to be here, but now I got to do this. Um, that's just the nature of football is, uh, and really on any uh, coverage, coverage element is being able to get good spacing regardless of where you're at and understand who you're working with to understand who you make right. Um, so sometimes when you talk about the explosives, it might, not, it might be a misunderstanding of what side you're on, what side you're not on. Um, and who you're working with, or it could be, just be uh, a perfect storm where a guy falls down and there is a seam there, you know? So um, all things that we got to educate our players on, we show trends during the week with uh, the plays of the week and uh, just good coaching points in terms of teaching guys how to get good spacing distribution.